All right, so hey everybody, this is Jared here. Uh, I'm with Stampede Blue. I'm also the owner of Bizarre Grind Coffee and Games. And what better way to help raise uh, both companies up than for Bizarre Grind to sponsor uh, a new segment here on Stampede Blue that I'm going to go ahead and call uh, Stampede Blue Bets the NFL or Jared Bets the NFL so that Stampede Blue doesn't have any legal, legal obligations here. So I need to start out by saying that I am in no way providing you with gambling advice. And I wouldn't want you to think that I was creating content with any idea at all of profiting off of your bets uh, or in trying to lead you to losing money. Uh, if anything, I'm just trying to show you my thought process so that if you decide you are going to gamble and you are willing to take a little bit of risk, um, you kind of understand what it kind of takes. So first of all, um, I went to Indiana Grand Casinos. Uh, it's called the Winner's Circle, which is the home of the new sports betting uh, counters, uh, tellers there. Uh, and basically, uh, what I'll do is I'll kind of walk you through uh, my experience, and then I'll show you my bets. And then I'm going to use this video, and then I've got a picture of the bets I made for proof. Um, but here's what I set out to do. Um, I had in my head that I needed to get on site in order to get uh, the actual odds before I come in. And I want to take a moment here to offer advice. Uh, so in, the, in Indiana, it's legal to bet on sports now. You have to fill out an application and have a permit to do it. If you live in the Indianapolis area, you're really confined to two places right now and that's indiana grand casino in shelbyville indiana and then you could also go to uh with the winner's circle which i believe yeah off track betting is downtown um so for me i live in lawrence and i chose to take uh, the long way i think and it took like 40 minutes to get there and it's way out on 74 in the southeast side uh, and it wasn't busy when I went in, and I went in about lunchtime during the week, so think about that. So it's going to be very busy, I can promise you that. Uh, I would not expect to be able to go through and place bets in a lunch hour, so I want you to keep that in mind. There is almost no chance of you going into that casino and ever getting in and out of there within an hour. I waited... Uh, over 45 minutes to place a bet and it was largely because and there's a reason I'm making this video very clearly the people in front of me are not serious gamblers and I will go ahead and tell you as someone that spent quite a bit of time in a casino um, and but has you know I haven't quite thrown my life away um, yet um, kidding um, basically you only want to make a couple bets for example, uh, one of the things that we, when you when you've bet on games, you got to realize most games are pretty close. The spread doesn't matter. Uh, there are factors that go into how they calculate Vegas odds. So I don't. I hope I'm not breaking any rules by telling you, hey, there's three points baked into the spread. The home team, as a general rule, gets a three point home field advantage. And that is factored into the, the spread between who's going to win and lose games. Um, and what I assume when I look at the NFL um, odds on a gambling website is I look at trend. So I look at what direction the spread is moving. And then if I see movement, then I bet. So it's hard to explain without like bringing up a program and trying to show you something, but I don't even do that. All I do is I try to memorize the line on Sunday night when it comes out for the games ahead. And then what I do is 24 hours later or the next day, when the odds have updated, I'll check them again and I'll note mentally if I saw any movement. And usually there are a handful of games every week. I'm not trying to be alarming. I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm just trying to be helpful, okay? What what I saw was, uh, and I'll show you my bets. 
but I saw the spread moving in five games this week, and it just kind of made me think, hmm, I'm going to place a bet. So what I'm betting is based on the spread that I got when I went to the winner's circle. Uh, It's a Caesars run casino here in Indiana called Indiana Grand Casino. It's a new facility. So for the record, the facility is awesome. It's got a giant TV wall. I wish I could have taken pictures, but Dan Dockich was there, and I didn't want to accidentally get him in a shot. So basically, uh, it's a real nice area to sit. They've got uh, these counters along the, along the left-hand side once you actually enter the bar that have all the odd sheets on it. You can bet, man, you can bet any sport you want. My negative review, and this is going to be the entirety of my negative review, first... I waited uh, 45 minutes and aligned five people deep with a single teller and a manager nearby that never got on and acted as a teller and just went ahead and knocked those out. Uh, And I feel like he's more competent on a computer and that the guy that was the teller was, I wouldn't say slower, just he didn't seem to have a sense of urgency. I'll say that. He was very steady, which is fine. And when I dealt with him, I took less than a couple minutes, so it told me everything I know, everything I need to know. First, when you go to a casino, you do not play. You do not normally place a single line bet. However, I'm going to stop right there and say, hey, I placed two single line bets today, and it's because, and again, part of a negative review is calling you out, I couldn't place a two-team parlay at a Caesars-run casino for uh, division champions in 2019. So they wouldn't let me bet that the Colts and Ravens win their divisions. Uh, I could have bet that if I, if I had the ability to on DraftKings Sportsbook, I could have bet the $50 I wanted to bet there, and it would have had a really nice payout uh, because I believe the Colts are like 13 13- to four to win the AFC South and the Baltimore Ravens are 17 and four or 17 to four odds. So about four, a little over four to one. So I felt like those were good bets just because basically when you bet the pair or you bet the parlay, that $50 bet is like a $1,200 to win. Right. And I understand people are like, Oh, you're a homer. You pick the Colts to win. No kidding. Um, The reality is, is that if the Colts had Andrew Luck and I had tried to bet that the Colts were going to win their uh, division, the odds would have been like two to one. I hate to say it like that. And again, it sounds like a homer, but with Andrew Luck in this roster, I really believe that the odds were probably two to one a couple weeks ago. Um, But I wanted to wait until the, until Vegas kind of settled down on Jacoby Brissett so that it had been announced a couple days so that's why I waited until the 4th. This was legal the September 1st. Um, but when I, got, when I got out there, uh, I noticed that three of the four people in front of me spent 15 or more minutes at the podium placing their bets. And this is because, first, a guy didn't have a pencil, and he walked up to the counter and got a pencil, and instead of getting out of the way and letting people go around him, he let a line build up behind him, and he placed his bets looking up at the TV on the wall and back down at the sheet of paper and instead of the guy having him get out of the way, do that somewhere else. And that's why there's all these chairs out here for you to sit in. So that's about the end of my negative review, right? They just, the line didn't move very well. There were a lot of inexperienced betters. There were additional teller stalls, but they'd never opened a stall. And when I left, the line was 10 people deep. And I just think you're losing dollar per hour as a business when you just don't turn and open another stall. And then the manager told us, uh, I've got somebody on the way, but there's nothing that I can do. And it just made me think about how unprepared they were for what I presume is a light crowd. Five to ten people deep is not a big deal, but it also shouldn't have taken an hour to get through those five people. Um, But that said... Sorry to go off there. It is a nice facility, um, lots of space, a really nice bar, probably great food. 
Uh, and the casino just looks nice and smells nice. It, it isn't so much of a smoke smoker's den as it has been. They've got some non-smoking areas in there now. Uh, and other than it just being all the way out in Shelbyville, I feel like it's a great, um, great business uh, for Indiana. It probably generates a lot of tax revenue and probably uh, heavily supports Indiana. So we, so that's part of the reason that we wanted to get involved, right? As part as a business owner, uh, when you when you basically you have to look at what you're spending your marketing and advertising dollars on. And now that sports betting is legal in Indiana, and I'm a sports fan, and we're a gaming business, right? So esports, sports, video games, board games, card games, any anything. If we can play it, every day is game day, right? So the way we look at it is, is it's not necessarily about gambling. It's more about gaming and just ha- having fun, right? Like football is a game. Um, betting kind of gambling is, is gaming, right? So uh, what I did today is I bet uh, I wasn't going to spend 100 bucks, uh, but I figured I'm out here uh, and I was at least placing a $50 bet because I got uh, I'll show you my, my parlays. I have two that I was going to bet. So for the record, I was going to bet uh, 50 bucks that the Colts and the Ravens win their divisions. Um, I just like the odds. Uh, Ravens were plus 425. Colts are plus 325. Uh, I bet 25 bucks ahead. I'll come out uh, $237.50. So 50 gets me... 237 so that's like a hundred and what 180 bucks profit um so i would have bet that as a parlay and i think it would have been like six times as much uh so it's kind of crappy i couldn't bet the bet the parlay uh, at a caesar's run resort it's just weird right like they would limit that and they didn't have any prop bets either gosh i feel like i'm just pooping on them but they i wanted to bet jacoby Brissett wins the nfl mvp and i get it that's a long shot too But when I left, I was looking on my phone at the DraftKings Sportsbook, and Jacoby Brissett is like 15,000 to 1 to win uh, the NFL MVP. And I had bragged on a podcast yesterday that I thought the odds were like 5,000 to 1. Uh, It's even better than that. It's like 15,000 to 1. It's so, so unlikely. Uh, And it's only probably, it's probably moving. so if you're going to bet, and I'm, I plan on making this bet too, I want to bet that Jacoby Brissett wins the 2019 uh, NFL MVP. Uh, and I think it's because I have faith in Chris Ballard and Frank Reich uh, and that they know what they're doing. And they have yet to show me that they don't. And I think they, they believe in Jacoby Brissett. And I think if the offensive line plays to its potential and the new look uh, wide receiver room – with Paris Campbell and Deion Kane and uh, Devin Funches, along with T.Y., Eric Ebron, Jack Doyle, all them. I really think that it's a dangerous offense, and I really think if you scheme it just right, every ball he throws is crisp. He's got a great arm. He's got a little bit of escapability, and you never know what could happen. It's such a long shot, right? But think about Jacoby Brissett's career. Think about think about Frank Reich's career, and then tell me that it's not possible. You... you Man, a lot of things have been impossible, and they've just straight up happened. So, like I said, I'm not trying to tell anybody to bet on anything, but I'm telling you, I'm like, I'm that excited for Jacoby Brissett that I almost was trying to place a prop bet and actual put money on the idea that I think he's the NFL MVP this year. Um, so, with that in mind, I couldn't place that prop bet right. So I got all excited about it, and I couldn't do it. Um, I bet a five. A five-line parlay, okay? And here's what I think happens, okay? And I can be wrong. I could be wrong as soon as tomorrow night. Who cares, right? Um, but the the Packers play at the Bears, and they're a three-point underdog. And I think the Packers win. Here's what you know, right? The Bears get three points for being the home team. So they're saying the they think that the what Vegas thinks is the Bears beat the Packers by a touchdown. I think the Aaron Rodgers has a fourth quarter comeback and they I think they win. And then on Sunday 
The Jets play at the Bills. The Bills play at the Jets. Sorry. The Bills play at the Jets, and the Packers play at the Bears. Yeah, yeah. So last year, by the way, uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers win uh, on the road. And then the Bills play at the Jets. And I understand the Jets have Le'Veon Bell. They've got Sam Darnold in year two. They've got upgraded weapons, all that stuff. Um, I think the Bills have a top-tier defense in the NFL. And I think that Josh Allen is a better uh, scoring quarterback. I'm willing to bet he had more touchdowns last year than Sam Darnold. Or at least like the last in the nine games or something. Like Josh Allen had a good back end of his rookie year. Um, I bet the Bills to cover uh, another three-point. So they think Vegas basically says the Jets win by six. And I think that the Bills will just straight up win that game. And then the Baltimore Ravens are a six and a half point favorite uh, on the road in Miami to play the Dolphins. And I think that they will blow out the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins are the new Redskins in terms of dumpster fires in in the NFL. Uh, So congratulations for being unseated. Uh, But the Ravens are a real one. Uh, I take Lamar Jackson very seriously. I think he's probably the best dual threat quarterback in the NFL. We'll see about Kyler Murray too. And that's the next, it goes right into the next bet. So among all the other games, so keep in mind, I looked at, I looked at all the odds in the house, man. I sat there for about 15 to 30 minutes. I did research. I looked at injury reports, try to figure out um, what I thought. And the Detroit Lions play at the Arizona Cardinals and they have uh, the Lions coming to Arizona, and they're two and a half point favorite. Um, so I take Arizona to win that game at home. That's the the emergence of Kyler Murray, right? If I'm right, and I think I'm right, I think Kyler Murray comes out and has a big game, and they win that game at home. And it's spirited football, and it's an emotional thing for the NFL. I feel like that's that's a, a good moment for the NFL. And then, of course, bet, you got to bet on yourself, right? Uh, so the Colts play at the Los Angeles Chargers in Carson, California. And the Colts uh, are six-and-a-half-point underdogs on the road. Um, and I think the Colts come out and play spirited football. I feel like they come in, they play a well, like a well-paced game, uh, and they come out and they just – I just think their offensive line is elite – and I feel like their defense is underrated. And I feel like the Chargers are banged up. Russell Okung is out at left tackle. Uh, they have no Derwin James. They have no Melvin Gordon. Uh, Phillip Rivers is getting a little older. Keenan Allen is always battling an injury. And I feel like the Jacoby Brissett has a lot of weapons to spread the ball around and keep the defense guessing. And I think that if they just stay in um, attack mode, and, they don't, and you know one of the things I hate about the NFL is when teams get ahead and they let up. Uh, and I hope that Jacoby Brissett and uh, Frank Reich and Chris Ballard, I hope that they've learned by now that just because you're up doesn't mean it's over. And that's what I want to see in the NFL now is I want to see teams keep stay on the gas pedal. You know, we can talk poorly about the New England Patriots, but when they're on, they're on, right? And they're not stopping scoring either. And they're not going to just stop running their regular offense. They're going to they're gonna run it into the ground. Um, and I think that's the way to play is making sure that they there is no such thing as a comeback if you don't give up the football either, right? Um, so, yeah, I bet 50 bucks, and that was what I wanted to bet this week. Uh, I wanted my business to use money we made. So we had a tasting party Saturday, and we used the profit off of that to buy our first bet for us. Uh, and it's a five-line parlay, but if it hits, it's $1,273.48, and we'll pay taxes on that. Um, and that will just help us. Uh, to market better, to make future bets. Um, And really what we just want to remind people to do, so again, this isn't betting advice. I'm just telling you what I did and and what my process was. Um, As I would recommend doing your research before you go in, I think that uh, there needs to be a way for me to look up the odds. If I can go to DraftKings uh, website, I can go to several websites all over the internet and get the odds. But I have to go place a physical bet because of the laws in my state. 
I think you should let me see the odds before I come in there because I'm comparing them against other options, right? So I know it sounds crazy, but there are people all over the country that will take your bet for you, right? If you just want to place a bet really badly, um, there are people in New Jersey or Las Vegas, I know for sure, that would place a bet for me. And I'm sure there are people in other states that would do it too. And I'm not saying I'm willing to do that. I have not done that. But I'm saying, let's be serious, like I couldn't get it to happen. Um, but now that it's legal in Indiana, I think that it's something that is, it's tempting. It's a good, it's good for the economy. It creates jobs. It, they pay a lot of taxes. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, what? Um, but it's true. Uh, Indiana Grand paid a lot of taxes and, and them, this being profitable for them is important. So I think it's important for them to have more than one cashier or teller ready at all times. Uh, and just be willing to knock down a line. They got to get some people in there that are just faster, uh, cranking out uh, tickets, because that's the important thing is to be fast. Um, and if I felt like it paid anything, I'd I'd apply to do it, right? Because um, I love that stuff. I may not know what I'm doing as far as like betting games. I'm probably awful, right? Um, but I did have fun doing it. I did I did sit down. I did research. I've been talking about it and thinking about it for a while. So it wasn't like I just ran out and did it and did it indiscriminately. Um, I literally waited until I made enough profit in cash to invest that money, to put it back into my business, to put it back into the economy, to put it right back, right back uh, to Stampede Blue. Um, so this is just something that we're doing for entertainment. So I hope you find it fun. Uh, that hey I went out uh, I didn't take any pictures uh, it was it's not well lit and um, and it looked all right you know the, like I said it wasn't a big smokers den uh, so it was all right with that and it had a nice bar area um, but yeah the line was just kind of awkward um, and that and that would it's not gonna keep me from doing it but I'm gonna go to uh, downtown to do it too. Um, and, and hopefully just have a better, a smoother transaction uh, experience where you just can get in and out of there if you want. Um, and I get it. They want you to get out of line and go to the bar and get a beer and wait for the line to die down. I understand that. But when you stand there for an hour, you kind of run out of reason, right? Um, so with that, uh, that's Jared from Stampede Blue via Bizarre Grind Coffee and Games sponsoring a new segment here. Um, we're just betting the NFL. Uh, we're just doing what we think this week. Uh, there weren't. It's not that I wouldn't take other bets like straight up, but I wanted to kind of keep it a little more concise. Um, <laughs> good luck with that, right, Jared? Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll talk to you soon here.